from Austin, Texas. It's the Cube, covering DockerCon 2017. Brought to you by Docker and support from its ecosystem partners. Hi, and we're back. I'm Stu Miniman, and this is Silicon Angle's production of the Cube here at DockerCon 2017, Austin, Texas. Happy to have on the program uh, Kieran Committee, who was CEO of ContainerX, which was acquired by Cisco, and you're currently the Senior Director and Head of Container Products at Cisco. And also joining us is Brad Wong, uh, who is the Director of Product Management at Docker. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having us. Thanks. Oh, so, so, Kieran, talk a little bit about ContainerX. You know, bring us back to you know wh why containers. You know, why you help you know start a company with containers, and you know went to be acquired by you know a big company like Cisco. Yeah, it was a, it was actually a, a late 2014 is when Pradeep and I, uh, my co-founder from ContainerX, uh, we started brainstorming about you know uh, what do we do in the space and the the fact that the space was uh, was growing. And my previous company called Rinku, which I sold to Citrix, where we had actually built a container uh, between 2006 and 2010. Um, uh, so, so we wanted to build a management platform for containers, and uh, it was, uh, in a way, there was a little bit of an overlap with Docker Data Center, uh, but we were focusing on multi-tenancy aspects of, of it, um, uh, bringing in concepts like VMware DRS into containers, et cetera. Um, and it was, we were acquired by Cisco about eight months ago now, and the transition of the last eight months has been fantastic. Great, uh, and Brad, just get your first time on theCUBE, so give us your background, what, what brought you to Docker? Yeah, so um, actually before Docker, I was at uh, actually a veteran of Cisco, uh, which is interestingly enough, uh, many different ventures in Cisco. Most recently I was actually part of the uh, NCME Networks team, focusing on uh, software-defined networking and application-centric infrastructure. So uh, obviously I saw a pretty uh, big trend in the infrastructure space, uh, that uh, you know, the future of infrastructure is being led by applications and developers. So uh, with that, I actually got to start uh, digging around with uh, Docker quite a lot and found some good interest and uh, you know, we started talking and essentially that's how I ended up at, at Docker to, uh, to look at uh, our uh, partner ecosystem, how we can involve that. Okay. About two years ago now, actually. Yeah, uh, and I think two years ago, Docker networking was a big discussion point. Cisco's right. been a partner there, but Bring us up to speed, if you would, both of you, on you know where you're engaging, you know, uh, you know, on the engineering side, you know, customer side, you know, and, and, and the breadth and depth of what you're doing. Yeah, maybe I'll start. Um, yeah, so you're right. Two years ago, uh, networking was in a quite a different place. Uh, we kicked it off with uh, acquiring a company back then called Soccer Plane, which helped us really define. Yeah, and, and, and we, we we know actually, you know, Madhu and Brent That's are right. Cube alums. Yes, uh, actually know those guys, and you know, it talked like your company from. You know, the idea to starting the company to doing acquisition was pretty quick for right, you right. and for them. Right, so. and, and we, we felt that we really needed to, to bring on board a good solid networking DNA into the company, and uh, we did that, and they helped us to find what a successful model would be for networking, which is why they came up with things like the container networking model and Lib Network, which actually then opened the door for uh, our partners to then start creating extensions to that and be able to ride on top of that to offer more advanced networking technologies like Contiv, for example. Yeah, and, and Contiv was actually an open source project that was started within Cisco even before the ContainerX acquisition. Right after the acquisition happened, um, that team got blended into our team and we realized that there were some really crown jewels in Contiv that we wanted to productize. And we've been working with Docker for the last uh, six months now trying to productize that. And we went from uh, alpha to beta to GA. Now Contiv is GA today, and it was uh, announced uh, in a blog post today. And it's actually a 100% open source networking product that uh, Cisco TAC and Cisco Advanced Services have offered commercial support and services for. It's actually a unique uh, moment because this is the first 100% open source project that Cisco TAC has actually offered commercial support for. So it's, it's a pretty interesting uh, uh, milestone, I think. Yeah, and actually also with that, we also have it available on Docker Store as well. And it's actually the first uh, uh, Docker uh, networking plugin that it's been certified as well. So uh, yeah. we're pretty also happy to, to have that on there as well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, is there any, anything else for the, the relationship we want to go in beyond, beyond those pieces? Yeah, yeah so um, you know, we also uh, saw that there was uh, a lot of other great uh, synergies between the two companies as well. Um, the first thing that we wanted to do was to look at how we can also 
make it a lot uh, a better experience for our, our joint customers to get Docker up and running, Docker Enterprise Edition up and running on uh, on infrastructure, specifically on Cisco infrastructure, so Cisco UCS. So we also kicked off a, a series of um, activities to test and validate and document uh, how Docker Enterprise Edition can run on Cisco UCS, Nexus platforms, etc. So. We went ahead with that and uh, a couple of months later we brought out uh, jointly two uh, Cisco validated designs uh, for Docker Enterprise Edition, one on Cisco UCS infrastructure uh, alone and the other one jointly with NetApp as well uh, with uh, the FlexBot solution. So we're also very, very uh, happy with that as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. great. Always, you know, we, we, our, our community, I'm sure, knows the, the CVDs from, uh, you know, what, the, what, what, what they are out there. Um, UCS was originally designed, I mean, to be the, you know, Infrastructure for virtualized environments. Um, can, can you walk me through? Is there, you know, what what are there significant differences there? Anything kind of changing, uh, to, you know, to, to move to containers versus what you know UCS for a virtualized environment? You know, uh, the goal with uh, UC, UCS is essentially considered a premium kind of infrastructure, uh, server infrastructure for our customers. And not only can they run virtual, virtual environments today, but our goal is as containers become mainstream, containers evolve to being a first class citizen alongside VMs, we have to provide our customers the solution that they need. And a turnkey solution from a Cisco standpoint is to take something like a Docker stack or other stacks that our customers adopt, such as Kubernetes or other stacks as well, um, and offer them turnkey kind of experiences. So with Docker Data Center, what we've done is uh, the CVD that we've announced so far has Docker Data Center and uh, uh, the recipe provides an easy kind of way for customers to get started with UCS on Docker Data Center so that they get that turnkey experience. And with the MTA program that was announced the, yep. uh, today at the, at the keynote, yeah. uh, right? So that uh, allows uh, Cisco and Docker to work even more closely together to have um, not just the products but also provide services to ensure that customers can completely sort of get started very, very easily with support from advanced services and things like that. Great. Uh, I'm wondering if you have any customer examples that you can talk through. If you can't talk about a specific, you know, <laughs> logo, maybe you can talk about are there key verticals that you see uh, that, that that you're engaging first, or you know, what what can you share? Yeah, maybe I'll start off. Um, you know, we've been working with uh, a joint customer of ours. Actually, a couple of them. Uh, once again, I don't think we can point out the names yet. Uh, Where we haven't we we haven't uh, fully disclosed, uh, included with their their uh, their relevant uh, PRs, but. Uh, uh, Definitely in the financials, um, uh, especially on the online financials, there's a significant company that we've been working with jointly uh, that has actually adopted both uh, uh, Contiv and uh, is actually seeing quite a lot of value in being able to uh, take Docker uh, and also leverage the networking stack that Contiv provides and be able to not just orchestrate uh, networking policies uh, for containers, but the other thing they want to do is to have those same policies be able to run on uh, cloud infrastructure like uh, AWS, for example. So they obviously see that uh, um, Docker is a great platform to enable their portability between on-premises and also uh, public cloud, but at the same time be able to leverage these kind of tools that uh, makes that transition and makes that move a lot easier so they don't have to rethink their security network policies all over again. Yeah. So that's been actually a, a pretty good use case, I thought, of uh, the joint work that we did together with, uh, with Contiv. Some of the customers that we've been talking to, um, um, in fact, we have one customer that I don't think I'm supposed to say the name just yet, but we've rolled it out, uh, has rolled out Contiv with the Docker runtime um, among, in five production data centers already. And these are the kinds of customers that actually take to um, advanced networking capabilities that Contiv offers for, um, so that they can uh, get comprehensive L2 networking, L3 networking, their monitoring tools that they currently use will be able to address the containers because the L2, uh, the L3 uh, networking capabilities allows uh, each container to have an IP address that is externally addressable so that the current monitoring tools that you use for VMs, et cetera, can completely stay relevant and be applicable in the container world. If you have an ACI fabric, that continues to work with containers, so those are some of the reasons why these customers seem to like it. So, uh, Kieran, you're relatively new into Cisco, yeah. and you came. You were a software company. Many people they still think of you know Cisco. It's a networking company. Uh, you know, I, I've heard people derogatory. It's like oh, they made hardware-defined networking when they rolled out some of this stuff. Right. Um, yeah. Tell us you know about you know you talked about an open-source project that you guys are doing. You know I, I you know I, I, I 
I've talked to Lou Tucker a number of times. I know, yeah. you know, says some of the software things you guys are doing. But give us your viewpoint, uh, you know, as to you know your your new employer and uh, you know how they might be different than what people think of as the Cisco yeah. we've known for decades. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Cisco is uh, has, of course, it has uh, you know several billion dollars of revenue coming in from hardware and infrastructure, and networking and security have been the bread and butter for the company for uh, many, many years now. But as the world moves to cloud native becoming a first class citizen, the goal is really to provide complete solutions to our customers. And if you think of complete solutions, those solutions include things like networking, you know, things like security, you know, including analytics and complete management platforms. At the same time, uh, you know, at the end of the day, the customers want to um, sort of come to peace with the fact that this is a multi-cloud world. Customers have data centers on premises or on hosted private cloud environments. They have workloads that are running on public clouds. So with products like Cloud Center, our goal is to make sure that whatever they uh, have from an applica the applications that they have can be orchestrated across these multiple clouds. We want to make sure that the pain points that customers have around deploying whole solutions include easy setup of products on infrastructure that they have, and that includes partnerships like UCS or running on ACI or Nexus. We want to make sure that we give that turnkey experience to these customers. We want to make sure that those workloads can be moved across and work, uh, run across these different clouds, and that's where products like Cloud Center come in. We want to make sure that these customers have top grade analytics, which is completely software. That's where the app dynamics acquisition comes in. And we want to make sure that we provide that turnkey experience with support in terms of services with our massive sort of services organization and partners, et cetera. So that's, so we, I, we view this as our job is to provide our customers what they need in terms of the end-to-end -end solution that they're looking for. And so it's not just hardware, it's just a part of it. Software, services, et cetera, complement it. All right, uh, Brad, last question I have for you. Sure. In the keynote yesterday, um, I, I couldn't count how many times the word ecosystem was used. Um, right. I, I think it was loud and clear to everybody there that uh, I think it was like, you know, Docker will not be successful unless it, you know, it partners successful, kind of vice versa. Uh, when you look at kind of the product development uh, piece of things, you know, how does that resonate with you in, in, in your job that you're doing? Yeah, and it's uh, you know we basically are seeing uh, Docker become more of a more and more of a platform, uh, as evidenced by yesterday's keynote. And uh, you know, with every platform, the only way the platform is going to be successful is if uh, we can do great. Uh, uh, we have great op options for our partners like Cisco to be able to integrate with us on multiple different levels, not just at one place. And the networking plugin is just one example, but uh, many and many other places as well. Uh, yesterday we announced. Uh, Two new open source uh, um, initiatives, uh, Linux Kit and also the Mobi project. Yep. Uh, you can imagine that there's probably lots of great uh, places where uh, partners like Cisco can actually uh, play in that, not just only in the server space, but maybe also in things like IoT as well, which is also a fast emerging place for, for us to be in. Uh, and all the way up until uh, you know day two type of monitoring type of uh, environments as well, where you know, we think there's a lot of great uh, places where, uh, you know, once again, uh, options like App Dynamics, uh, titration, analytics can uh, fit in quite nicely with uh, uh, how do you take applications that have been uh, migrated or, or, or modernized into containers and start really tracking those uh, using a common tool set. So we think that's uh, really, really good uh, opportunities for our ecosystem partners to, to really innovate in that space and differentiate as well. Kieran, want to give you the final word, uh, takeaways that you want uh, kind of the users here and th those out watching the show uh, to know about you know, Cisco uh, in, in the Docker environment. Yeah, I want to let everybody know that Cisco is not just hardware. Our goal is to provide turnkey, complete solutions and experiences to our customers. And as they walk through this journey of embracing cloud native workloads and containerized workloads, there's various parts of the problem that include all the way from hardware to running analytics to networking to security and services help. And Cisco as a company is here to offer that help and make sure that the customers can walk away with current key solutions and experiences. Kieran and Brad, thank you so much for joining us and we'll be back with more coverage here, day two, DockerCon 2017. You're watching theCUBE.